Good morning, folks. We've got astronomy, electroquake science, climate studies, and notes on the magnetic event unfolding at our planet. We're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. Finding the last 24 hours on our star brought increased activity on the departing limb as the southern coronal hole hit central heliographic longitudes. Yesterday, we showed the small C-class flare, and a couple hours later, the coronal fields expanded and released a tiny CME 90 degrees away from Earth, off to the side. And this morning, we see the plasma filaments are keeping up the activity level. This filament sweep and slide is a motion indicative of higher activity developing and to come. Now, while the solar wind is utterly quiet, geomagnetic conditions as well, we do stand a chance to receive intensified streams from that southern coronal hole early next week. They are expected to be minor, but an intensification nonetheless. Up first in our link list today, Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille over at the Sky Scholar channel continues his examination of the cosmic microwave data, which more amounts to fantasy. His channel has crushed this topic for over a year, and yesterday's video showed a key design flaw in the detector, which complements the phantom processing they have been using to make their sky maps. Check it out. Up next, a few notes from the journals here as we are going to massive disk galaxies first, getting a little dark matter baby step in the right direction. Step by step seeing dark matter isn't needed in the way they thought their equations would need it is always something that'll make us smile. Next, we're going to a star that might be in grand minimum phase. While the age of the star doesn't preclude that it's just old and tired, that could be said of our sun, and our sun has its grand cycles of activity nonetheless. Quick note on gravitational waves up next, and if they really know what they're looking at. By tweaking assumptions that are known to be best guess only, they come up with qualitatively similar results to most gravitational wave study teams, but not quantitatively. They highlight the importance of initial assumptions and the danger of getting them incorrect at the outset. Moving on to the CSES satellite built to track all the pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals the activity gives away beforehand, this is everything from stress-induced ion release from the ground to solar-driven amplification of global electric circuit capacitance to the crust. Today, we are seeing they can perform ionospheric studies even better than they had hoped. Its sensitivity to the subtle is a boon for space weather studies of geophysical effect and of earthquake preparation processes. Up next, folks, we've mentioned the ocean and albedo mechanics that Earth uses to halt rapid temperature changes in either direction. Here's another. Too rapid warming of the Arctic? Prepare Siberia for a major chill. The extra ice and snow albedo feeds back into the global system thereafter. A quick skip over to the realization why they can't well detect certain electrodynamic features in the sky. They keep discovering more and more ways our electrodynamic planet is sneaky. And when you get the highly sensitive to space energy ionic layer of the planet involved, you get sneaky penetrations. We've seen how some subtle magnetic changes in the solar wind can drive massive changes in polar particle events. But at lower latitudes, the story is about proton density, the plasma pressure of the space weather event. The low latitude areas take the direct impact, CME compression of the magnetic fields, meeting the equatorial ion fountain, sneaking through at the L shells, and exciting the global electric circuit. They describe the penetrating electric field and electrojet excitement as a prompt response immediately upon the impact of space weather, lasting about 20 minutes, which in terms of energy transformation below to the atmosphere for climate forcing is an impressively quick run. Folks, there was another superbolt recorded in China, this one captured in the distance even further behind the nearby urban lights. When the fingering of the lightning comes up, not down, spreads out and has a sustained genesis point at the ground, that's an Earth discharge. I maybe could show one or two of these a year before now. We've shown 10 this summer. As Earth's magnetic field weakens, the planet juices up. With solar wind and solar magnetism dropping, the outside environment is less juiced up, and we are more apt to discharge violently. By the way, this NASA animation from a few days ago, which they scrubbed, is still not back, and yes, it is on that magnetic change at our planet. They claim they are working on the problem in an email, but it's just fixing a link or making a new page that was three days ago and it's still not back here. Magnetic field event ongoing, Earth discharge phase ramping up, on the long way down. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. 
eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.